What is up, Tamers, and welcome back to Nexomon. This is a bit of a different episode than usual because it actually isn't part of a live stream at all. It's not a highlight for once, which I think is actually the first time that that's happening here on the Not Munching Orange channel. Uh, but I feel like Nexomon has kind of found a home here, so I decided to try something a little different and keep it on here, even though we're not, you know, live right now, which is definitely a little bit weird. Uh, but there's actually two reasons for that. One, because I'm going to be pretty busy in this upcoming weekend, and I'm not exactly sure how many streams we're going to be able to get in, especially Nexomon ones. And two, because I've actually been enjoying this game a whole bunch, and I just wanted to play some more of it for you guys, uh, have at least another, you know, episode this week. Uh, so, in the last one, we took down the first Nexo Tyrant. That is definitely not what it's called, but just the, the tyrant, I guess. And now we're going to report our findings to the guild here in Param. It is actually pretty cool to be doing this just as a recording, though, too, because there's a lot of stuff that I want to talk about the game that I haven't really gotten a chance to do on stream or I always forget or I don't know. There's just a lot of distractions when I'm streaming. So we got story for now. And if you guys are excited, make sure to hit that like button. You know, that's the first time we get to say that on this channel, too. Maybe. I, I feel like another video might have had it, but uh, we got Emily here. Well done. I expected nothing less from you. Oh, yeah. We're no longer covering her head either. You can see that beautiful face there. This is your reward for successfully protecting your client. Of course, we helped Videl in her time of need and took down that first boss, uh, which apparently you guys pointed out was not bugged. It's intended to have its HP at half. And that actually made perfect sense with the story we got after that um, it had already been in a fight before. I forgot the dude's name, but it's not much, but you will get far more interesting things as you take on harder quests. Can we talk about, you know, the thing that tried to eat us? <laughs> Ugh, fine. I suppose that you've earned a lesson about the tyrants. Yes, more story. I am curious why the ice tyrant, which is actually there in the bottom right corner, was teamed up with uh, that lady Atlanta. As we speak, the Nexomon of our world are waging a war among themselves. They're trying to replace the previous king of monsters, Omnicron, a powerful creature that was slain millennia ago. For centuries, almost every Nexomon has been competing to be acknowledged as the new king, see? I have a feeling the bird dude right there is going to end up winning it. Such is the reason our world is so miserable. We're caught in the middle of a ridiculous power struggle among monsters. Hold on, a thousand years? How come they haven't found a new king yet? What's taken so long? That's the thing, nobody knows. And at this rate, humans might not survive to see the end of this war. However, a breed of exceptional Nexomon has started to appear in recent decades. We call them Tyrants. In many ways, their power and intelligence resemble Omicrons. Even if just a little, Nivalis is one of them. The tyrants are an ill omen. It is likely that one of those psychotic beasts will eventually become the new king. Hey, just because they're monsters don't mean you got to go calling him psycho. Come on, Emily. That gorilla over there, though. I mean, yeah, he's, he's a little crazy, but the rest of them, they don't deserve that. That's the gist of it. Savage Nexomon annihilating each other, crushing hopeless humans in the process. I think you're the savage one here, Emily. Don't be concerned about such matters just yet, Orange. I have a very important job for you, so please, focus. Okay, I'll try my best. We got no distractions from chat this time, so that should be no problem. Hello, Orange. I have a rather pressing request. It's been a while since we've talked to, uh, Grandpa over here. What's up? I'll get to the point. The orphanage is under attack. What? Why? <laughs> oh no, Coco! Their intentions don't matter, lad. They must be stopped either way. This may be dangerous. You'll need to team up with both Ross and Nora. Wait, I just realized a typo in the game. Come on. Hey, this may be a dangerous. Come on. There shouldn't be any issues if the three of you work together. The three of us? Who's the third? Papa orphanage guy here? I don't, I forgot his name already. Ross and Nora are our rivals, of course, but the old man, I don't remember, even though it literally just said his name. Please take a moment to prepare yourselves. The healing center and general store, yeah, yeah, we got it. There's actually a couple things I want to show off here in Param before we go anyway. So, uh, maybe we can check out the, oh, 
I was about to say Pokemon Center. The Healing Center, I think, is what it's called. Look for characters with the star icon. Yeah, yeah. We got that, too. Uh, we actually already did most of the side quests, I think, in the city, so... We'll just head right out. And actually, one new thing that we unlocked at the end of the last episode after beating Nivalis is we can use the Warp Stones, but... We actually haven't activated the one back at the orphanage yet, so we're going to have to walk our way there. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to head over, I think, this way. And you guys may remember we took down this one dude who had some pretty rare Nexomon, uh, which I think might actually be from the first Nexomon game. I don't quite know, but this guy over here. Or wait, this is a different lady entirely. Have you met Clave yet? That fellow will buy whatever shards you bring to him. No, 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 no. We're not going to sell our shards. We're trying to give them over to you. As we're going to get 300 coins for this. Uh, which is a pretty decent trade. Of course, in the back of this building, we can also use our shards that we've been getting from breaking apart all those rocks around the world to synthesize cores. And I think we might have enough to make some of these. Ah, oh, we can only make the weakest one. Damn, we almost have enough to make the second strongest. I mean, I think... It'll be worth it to just keep stocking them up because the tier threes are really the only ones that are worth it. I don't know what the point of getting the lower tier ones is unless you really desperately need the slight power boost like right now. But I think we're okay on those. Uh, I'm just going to keep saving up for the tier three cores. But this building here. Yes. Hello. Have you come to fund our little extinction project? Hey, that's the name of the game, dude. But yes, indeed, we have come to fork over the coins and get ourselves the experimental lure, which means that the Nexomon he had in that battle with him are actually going to start appearing in the wild eventually. When you least expect it, it'll happen. Good luck. So I don't think there's any specific place where they pop up. Or maybe there is, but I mean, it's going to tell us a little bit about it here. Additional Nexomon such as the ones you just saw even though we didn't just see them. That was a minute ago Maybe a little refresher to our memory would be nice. You might find them in matching environment Ignisha for the fire type for example. Good luck So yeah, there's no specific place where they spawn, but now that we've got that lure I mean we just look around in the wild and hope that they pop up I guess I'm pretty sure we're all healed up and as you might notice I did a little bit of training off screen as well most of these guys are actually just one level away from evolving so maybe when we head over to the orphanage we'll be able to see those evolutions i'm still not exactly sure which ones i want to keep around on our final team or anything uh but i totally forgot i wanted to go to the healing center anyway so that we could check the pc because this lady here actually wanted a cruff i believe in exchange for a golden Nexo Trap, which will guarantee 100% catch anything. And I actually did manage to find a Cruff off screen, but, well, technically I recorded it. Uh, it just wasn't, oh wait, did we talk to this guy? Yeah, I think we did. Anyway, I'm pretty sure we can find another Cruff because I actually want one on the team. And if we were to give it over to that lady, obviously we wouldn't have one on the team anymore. So we'll try to find another Cruff in this video or recording or whatever. What's the point of sending all four of us? I can handle this by myself. Okay, okay, Ross. Is, why is Coco here? I mean, yeah, that's exactly it. I'm a mute. <laughs> Do you really want him negotiating with the kidnappers? I made a joke about that earlier, how Coco is literally here to be like our character's voice. Since like in every JRPG, that's a trope that the main character doesn't talk. So Coco talks for us. I'm just going to knock down the front door and beat him up. Calm down. Our priority is to get the hostages out. We also need to figure out their intentions. Attacking an orphanage doesn't make a lot of sense. Nora, always the smart one. Let's hurry up then. This could be our promotion to Silver Tamers. Already? I don't know exactly what the rewards for that are, but I know that one of them was that we can activate the warp stones, but we ended up getting that already. So let's activate this one. That'll of course uh, let us get back to Param a lot quicker if we need to, but... Hey, even though I wanted to look around for a Cruff, seems like the orphanage or helping out whatever's going on in here is more important right now. So let's see what it is. Oh, these masked fools again. No, it's not you. What about you? Nah, wrong kid. Ugh, curses. You're not the right one either. I can't believe my luck. 
I'm gonna guess they're looking for us. My lord will not be pleased. Now, who is your lord, exactly? Who goes there? Oh, damn! Looking like some Persona users out here. She was about to rip that mask off. A guild tamer! Tch. So, they're already on their way. Who? I'm as confused as always, man. <laughs> that is not a surprise, though. Whether I'm streaming or not, I'm always gonna be confused by minor plot points, but... I'm thinking that they might be looking for us. I don't know why she wouldn't recognize us then, so maybe it is someone else after all, but... Uh, at level 11... Not too terribly higher than us. And that's another thing that I, for some reason, still have yet to mention on the streams, is that this game actually has level scaling for both the Wild Nexomon and the battles, actually. So, even if you go out, because uh, of course this is pretty much open world, we haven't done too much exploring yet, like, aside from the main path of the game. Um, but if you did go out exploring and, like, got super over-leveled, the game would actually scale up to your level, so you don't ever really get super over-leveled. So no matter what, there's a bit of challenge to the game, which is really cool. And like I said, it includes the Wild Nexomon too, so... I don't know if it's really... Like, I don't know when the best time to catch stuff is, if we should just keep, you know doing the story and wait to fill up our teammates or party or whatever. Or if we should just start catching stuff that I like now. I'm thinking that's the best strat though. I mean, if I see a Nexomon I like, I can't resist wanting to catch it. So if we ever see anything cool, even if it's at a bit of a lower level, might as well catch it, add it to the team now because, you know, as we do more of the story and just battle, it'll grow up with us, so. I think both options are valid. You can either wait and catch stuff later, or just catch stuff now, like Stinger, who we've had from the very beginning. You saved us, you saved us. That was amazing, yeah. Hey, those guys are looking for a specific kid. You gotta stop them. A specific kid? That's strange. We should find them before they do. Okay. I still have a feeling it might end up being us, to be honest, but... Maybe those, uh, villains, the masked marauders are just dumb. That's pretty much every villain in every, well, usually Pokemon games. Maybe next time on they're actually a little more threatening. I mean, it seems like the story in this game so far has been a bit more serious, or at least more dramatic. And here's Nora, our favorite rival. All right, we've got them quartered now. Ooh, is this going to be a double battle? The guild's tamers are here. We gotta run. Hold on, we still need the target. We can do this. We're so close. <laughs> okay, we definitely don't know who those guys are yet. I think we ran into them back in the last episode or two episodes ago. They were like trying to fight Videl or looking for something during that whole Nivalis side quest, but... They definitely haven't revealed exactly who they are yet. Or maybe I missed that little detail. Hopefully not, though. Uh, but they got some really cool Nexomon. Resonic? No relation to just Sonic, of course, but... Looks like it might be related to, like, Beautifly or something. <laughs> or a Vivian or one of those, you know... Bug... Butterfly-looking things. I don't think we've really seen a butterfly next to him on though, so I have no idea what could it evolve from. All I know is I've been trying to learn my type advantages in this game, and I think I've got them pretty down every time I play like off screen or on the Switch version, which finally got updated by the way, thank goodness. Uh, so now the synergy cores and all that are in it. But I always keep up the little cheat sheet of like which types are super effective. So now I know fire is good against ghost, and Plant is good against Electric. So we were able to make quick work of those guys. Hmm. That's pretty strange, ain't it? They were searching for a particular kid. Okay, we get it. Which one of the kids is it? None of these, of course. Again. Hmm. Seems like there are still some hostages around here. Why do you look so happy about it, Coco? That is not the right time to be smiling all... Cheerful-like. Not exactly cheerful, but just... He looked like nothing bad was going on at all. Very nonchalant, you could say. 
Uh, but I'm guessing now we got to go over to the other side of the hall where we picked up a shiny apple before. I don't know how I remember that. Come here, you coward. You can't just break into my home like that. Get off me, stupid kid. You're wasting my time. I have to find the target for my lord. All right, you simps. It's time to take care of business here. Ross is going to chase him around the table, I guess. But you know we're going to be the ones that end up battling him. So come on, just let's get to it here. Oh, you're cornered now. We've got gotcha. you. A little bit sad that it's not a double battle, but oh my god, what is this? Rust, look at him. <laughs> okay, we need one of those on the team. Actually, I don't think we have a mineral type yet. So yeah, that's uh, top priority now. I don't quite remember what minerals are weak to though, other than water. Definitely not electric though. That really hurt Kikoko there, so. Let's try to swap out to Odin. I mean, I'm going to assume this one just because of Pokemon, but I'm pretty sure it's not a thing in this game that grass is super effective against it. Or plant, rather. But hey, it did a lot of damage, so even if it's not super effective, it's doing enough. Uh, maybe we can go for Skunkute here. I think Skunkute is actually really close to evolving. So if it can actually take down Snush here, we might just see... Our first Nexomon evolution, and of course, he misses the combo. Come on, Skunkute. I just want to see that evolution. Hey, at least he makes up for it with a critical hit there. I like that. Uh, Dinja is actually another one of the starters, I believe. The normal type starter. I don't know what level that one evolves at, but... Oh, another critical hit! Okay. Trying to prove something today, aren't you guys? And there we go, at level 12, Skunky will indeed be evolving. Get hyped for our first evolution, boys! And it goes on two legs. Was not expecting that, but we got Skunk Q. Just got rid of the T sound at the end there, I guess. I don't know about these Nexomon names, to be honest. They've been pretty hit or miss for me. The designs are cool, but the names... Eh... Sometimes they're good. Guild Tamers are the best. Just doing my job. Except it was me that took him out. Don't take credit for my work, Ross. We know you live with us. <laughs> Get out of here before I smack you in the face. Wow. They're children. Relax. Even though I guess technically we're children still too. I think we've rescued all the kids. Let's exit the building and report back. Back to Param? I can see you, Orange. You thought that you could fool my eyes, but I know what you are destined to do, and I will not allow it. Who? Oh my god. No, you do not know me yet, but one day we shall meet face to face, and you will know exactly who I am. Fear me, Orange! Uh... I am pretty scared of this psychedelic... Hellish effect we got going on, but... It's instantly gone. That didn't last very long. Wait, does it come back if we go back to this room? Nope. Well, that was definitely weird. <laughs> For a second, I thought it might be Zinnia, or whatever that lady's name was, that stopped time in the first episode, but... Maybe it's the anti Zinnia. Well done, all of you. I can tell that you're on the path to becoming excellent tamers. Take the reward. No point in walking all the way back to the city. And we get 500 coins plus some special Nexo traps. Sir, they were looking for a specific child. Right, and do you know who their target was? Nope. No idea. Maybe it was me? What? But they saw me! Why would they not? Whoa, what gives? Who would want to kidnap someone as boring as Orange? Wow! You can tell he's jealous, man. That's why that... Uh, they don't even look like sweat drops, actually. It just looks like he's got some weird alien infection. It's just a guess, but... I had them cornered. They were losing and about to run away. Until Orange came to assist me, see? 
Only then did they choose to stay and fight, just as they saw Orange, the one orphan who wasn't in the building at the time. And this is true, but he's so boring. <laughs> Shut up, Ross. Damn, tell him, girl. Nora, go with Ross and teleport, or report all of this to Emily. I must speak with you, Orange. I got teleportation on the mind, bro. I'm, I'm trying to get back to Param right now. Ugh, I swear, for every brain cell Ross is missing, Nora has twice as many. Yes, she's right. You were meant to be kidnapped by those bandits. I fear that the wheel of fate is turning much faster than I'd hoped. Come with me. It's time for you to get some answers. Finally. I mean, I kind of guessed that they were after us, but I still have no idea why or who they are exactly. One thing we do know is that this man's name is just Mentor. They couldn't even give him a name. Orange, surely you don't hold tyrants in high regard, do you? Say, what if I told you that there might be a good tyrant, one that is actually worthy of becoming the king of monsters? Ain't that a Yu-Gi-Oh thing? Or is that a whole different show, the king of monsters? I think that's the king of dual monsters. <laughs> and for some reason, I just got the Joey accent activated. There must be one good tyrant out there, right? Yes, indeed, there are stories of one such creature. One whose eyes are not clouded by madness, nor their heart tampered by hatred. Quite amusing, right? The so-called Tyrant of Light. Is that the secret 7th, 8th type? Maybe ninth type? I don't know how many types there are, but... Many, many tamers have spent a lifetime searching for this good Tyrant. Your parents among them. Now, where did I put that thing? Oh yeah, we're an orphan. What the heck did happen to our parents? Here you go, just a tad dusty. I mean, I'm guessing they're dead, but we don't know exactly how they died. Anyway, we get the Tyrant Relic. Nay, your parents never found the Tyrant. However, they did make an unprecedented discovery, or so I'm told. This Relic, it allegedly belongs to the Tyrant of Light. I don't know whether that's true or not, but... If those bandits came all the way here to kidnap you, the artifact that you were to inherit must be the reason. You can do whatever you want with it. It is not your duty to search for a creature that may not even exist to begin with. But I want to search. Is that so? All right. I'll help you find this tyrant if that's what you want. I don't know much about the artifact, but I do or know how to learn more. Follow me. I'll put you in the right direction, kid. Is there going to be some spooky library? Is this literally Pokemon Insurgents? Over here. Come on, kids. You need to catch up. Wait, kids? Oh, oh, Coco. I thought, I mean, Coco's a cat. Is he really a kid too? A kid cat? Are you guys really looking for a good tyrant? Seriously? There's no way something like that exists. You know that, right? We could be doing quests and stuff instead. <laughs> this is the quest. What do you mean, Coco? Stay safe, kids. Those kidnappers are but one of the countless dangers that lurk in this world. A myriad of terrible things will surely come after you, one after another and another. Oh, God. I'm not ready for that. Uh, but they actually didn't even heal our Nexomons. But thankfully, there is one of these crystals right over here. I was going to say, uh, someone or actually a couple of comments pointed out that we could have healed to the left of the orphanage. I don't think we've been to that area yet. So maybe we could go check it out real quick uh, before moving along with the story. But then again, we did just get healed, so there's not much point to going back there. Aside from exploring, of course, because like I was talking about earlier, but didn't really finish my thought. Uh, this game is pretty open world as far as where you can go. Like right now, if we really wanted to, we could F off over to another region entirely. Uh, which I think is actually what's over here. A Synergy Core. What? I didn't know you could get more of those. We have the Tier 3 one right now already on one of our Nexomons, but... I didn't realize you could get more of them over here. And yeah, this Fairy Captain over here can take you to Palmaya right now, which is a whole different region, quote-unquote. I mean, it's not quite like regions in Pokemon, you know? It's not like we're going Kanto to Unova or something, but... 
It's more like we're going to a whole different city with, you know, a different environment and different Nexomon to catch and all that. Uh, which is pretty cool. So, Gekoko pretty much has all of the XP boosting ones. We got the one and two. Maybe we can keep those on him and then put the, uh... Oh yeah, we have one of these already on Dinja. Maybe we can put this other one. That is basically like the EXP share, so it'll copy anything that we get over to him. Because I want to see them starter evolutions. I mean, I want to see Gekoko's evolution too, but for some reason, I chose not to lead off with him. Maybe that was a bad choice. Uh, I don't remember if we've actually battled this guy before, though. Maybe if I read his dialogue, he would have told us, like, whether this is a rematch or not, but... Too late for that now. Oh my god, okay, this is definitely a rematch, dude. He's already got an evolution out here. And a critical hit again! Oh yeah, we definitely need to go catch ourselves a Cruff, man. There's been a lot of Nexomon that, uh... Well, actually, this is just the normal type, which I think are only weak to Psychic and Ghost. I was about to say that there's been a lot of things weak to, um... Water, but we don't have a Water type on the team. As he switches back out to the Electric! Okay. I think Scaratic might be pretty close to evolving too, so this is nice. Oh my god, you got a third one? Bro, the Chocobo out here! I don't know if they're actually weak to Grass, but I know that Grass definitely resists Electric at least, so... Let's go for that Green Glow. Oh yeah, that's doing a lot of damage. I'm getting slightly better at these type matchup advantages and all that. There goes that guy, though, and Dinja gets the level up. Ooh, learning the smokescreen, too. Hey, Scaratic leveling up, too. But no evolution. I thought Stinger evolved at level 12, actually. I guess not. Huh. Oh, whatever. Let's just heal up and keep exploring. Because, like I said, I want to get a Cruff before we move on. And Cruff can be found in a couple of areas actually near to the orphanage here. Always got to smash those shards, too. Whenever you see him, just go for it. There's no reason not to. Um, I think this is actually one of the areas that Cruff can be found in, too. As well as another chest, apparently. And another Synergy Core. Are you kidding me? So we got three of those now. Uh, I think this is actually the Grass Starter, isn't it? I might have pointed that out before, but... There's another big chest up there that we can't quite get. But it does remind me of something... Oh my god, what is this? The Rapnux, bro! <laughs> okay, so the levels are definitely scaling up. Because I don't remember ever seeing this thing before. Even when I was playing it on the Switch version. I have never seen this guy. In this area, or any area for that matter. Oh, come on, Stinger! Wow! I actually wanted to catch that one. Oh well. Hey, there's the Cruff. Well, that kind of worked out. Um, I don't know if I want to burn it, though, like we did to that other guy. Or wait, did we bind it or burn it? I don't even know now, but all I know is I'm going to switch over to Odin, who is actually probably super effective against this, so maybe not the best idea. And I went for the poison move, too, and we poisoned it. Oh, God. Okay, this is not good. Um... I mean, we have water in Exo Traps. That's a 65% chance of catching. It's probably going to work out. That's still the one mechanic that I, like, need to learn more about is the actual catching of Nexomon. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, you know? You can feed it. You can use certain types of Nexo Traps to increase your chances. But I feel like the button pushing part is really unnecessary, in my opinion. Um... Now that we evolved Skunk Q, I mean, I don't know if I'm really trying to train him up since we've also got Dinja on the team. So at least we got to see an evolution. <laughs> I thought a lot more were going to end up happening in this episode, but for now, we just got the one. And we got the Cruff, which is actually the whole reason why we went up there anyway. So I guess now we can move along to the story. Or wait, before we do that, I'm going to equip some more cores. Maybe to Cruff, since he's the lowest level, obviously. Can put that Synergy Core on him. And you know what? I'll take the ones that Dinja's got, too. Uh, there is actually a shortcut button to just remove all the cores at once, which is actually really nice. I don't know if that was in the game from the start or if it got patched in later, but... Definitely helpful. 
And then we'll set Gekoko up first so he can get all this juicy experience. Of course, he's got the uh, XP boosting synergy cores. I don't know what they're called exactly, but the ones that basically give you more experience for knocking Mons out. And I think that's the best strategy for training is to have the Mon that you're going to be fighting with have those cores and then you give anyone else the sharing cores, the XP share, basically. Oh god, don't die, Onin, please! Oh my god, the crit, but wait, it blocked? Did it just use Protect? Or the equivalent of Protect, basically? Wind should not be very... or... I don't know, I'm, I'm over-explaining it right now, dude. Let's just focus on <laughs> finishing off this battle, as Dinja is actually gonna be putting in the work. And Gakoko barely got anything. Oh, Stinger, though, with the level up? Hey, there it is! I thought it might happen, and it did. Level 13 was the lucky number. And we're gonna have Stinger evolving into Moon Sting. Again, like I said, the names of these Nexomon are not my favorite thing about the game. <laughs> Moon Sting, like, that sounds like a, like a nickname, not the actual creature name or the official Nexomon name. Rookies tend to travel south, hoping to capture some ghost and psychic types. That's fine and all, but you'd have a much easier time with proper elemental traps. Well, it's a good thing we... Oh! She's actually gonna sell us some! I was about to say, we didn't buy any back when we saw that merchant before Nivalis, but <laughs> it worked out, man! We get some from this girl right here! And we have another trainer, uh, but we're a little bit weak right now from that last battle, so maybe not the best idea to take him on. I mean, I just saw Gekoko's at full health, so we'll probably be okay. Are you en route to the Immortal Citadel? It is a popular spot for sure. Quite a few trainers go there to get the... Okay, I can't. I'm over it. I'm definitely trying harder to read all the dialogue. That is one thing that I saw in the comments a lot. Um, you guys keep saying how I'm skipping over important dialogue or like important story parts. And I agree, like, I'm a little bit jaded thanks to Pokemon. Like, oh my god, what is that thing? It's like a... St Wait, what is the name of it? A stink bug? Or a roly-poly? I don't know, it's one of those bugs that like rolls up dung. Oh, a dung beetle, that's what it's called. I just had to think of the word dung, I guess. But... Yeah, because of Pokemon games, you know, usually all the random NPCs just blabber on nonsense. Like, I love Pokemon so much, I've been training since I was one year old. And I kind of got used to the fact that, you know, the dialogue is for the most part meaningless. But in this game, you guys have said, and I've noticed myself, like, watching back the videos, um, there's a lot cooler dialogue, and most of the time it's actually important story stuff. Maybe not so much with the NPCs or the random trainers, you know, but when it's story or when there's like a little cutscene, yeah, I'm definitely going to try harder to just read it all the time. As this guy here is giving us a little preview of what's coming up ahead, I guess. A lot of Psychic and Ghost Nexomon. Oh my god, they do a lot of damage too, bro. Holy crap, get Coco! He's living it though! And actually, I think... If we go Pulse Storm, we might be faster than it. Should we risk it for the biscuit? Let's go! Oh, good job, Gekoko! Let's get it, bro! Might even get the double kill here. Okay, no, I'm not gonna risk this one because I want Gekoko to get experience. And if you get fainted, you actually don't get EXP as far as I know. So we definitely want to keep Gekoko alive and just knock it out with Skeretic. There we go, 140 experience! Hell yeah, we're gonna get that level 14. And even Krupp is gonna gain a level. Uh, but yeah, we should definitely head back and heal up, I think. Oh no, come on, Gekoko. Why, my dude? Oh my god. Is he slow or something? Not like that, I mean like... He's not very quick, because we keep failing to run away, specifically with Gekoko, and I don't know why. Oh my god, the woozy though! <laughs> Okay, this is what I've been looking for. Even though I don't think we're gonna use it because we already have two electric types on the team. Uh, this is one that I've been training up on the Switch version. So basically, 
I guess to explain that, because some of you guys might think, like, I've spoiled the whole game for myself already. Uh, but I actually have barely done any of the story on the Switch. I've just been exploring the areas, which is still kind of spoilery, but I feel like the story is the main part that you don't want to get spoiled on. So I don't really know anything about the story or what's coming up in terms of that, but I do know some of the areas we're going to explore. And yeah, Woozy's one of the ones that I've been training up on that version. Not sure that we're going to train it here, like I said, but we might as well catch it. A fluffy Nexamon that resides on high plains. Its wool allows it to store lots of stat power. And you're going to the storage, buddy. Because we got to move on with the story. Oh, <laughs> for a second I thought we couldn't even move on. But yeah, we got to go through the tree trunk. And over to the spooky forest. This relic. I have absolutely no idea what it really is. But Orange's parents were convinced that it is somehow connected to the Tyrant of Light. Wait, you mean my parents? Why is he calling us in third person? We'll need the help of a psychic. What? Are you serious? A powerful witch who lives in the immortal citadel to the east. With her clairvoyance, you might uncover the secrets behind this artifact. I wish that I could have been more helpful, but this is a journey that only you can take, Orange. Watch your step. Remember that somebody's after that relic. What is he talking about? The Immortal Citadel, huh? I've heard of it. It's full of spirits and such. Really creepy. It's the sort of place you'd never send two kids to, but... Our mentor sure seems fine with it, as we made it to the Haunted Woods! Another synonym, like, I think a while ago, or wait, no, now I'm getting confused with Insurgents. I saw something called a giant stone and I called it a big rock or vice versa. This time I said the spooky forest, turns out it's the haunted woods. But you know, it's the same thing, just different words. Anyway, I think we found a psychic already, as this girl here wants to read our fortune. I see, I see. A large evil tyrant, and another, and another. Oh geez, that's a lot of tyrants. <laughs> Bruh, isn't that what the guy in the last route told us too? Yeah, <laughs> that's not good, Coco. He just said he suddenly realized maybe we shouldn't be hanging out. Oh my god, get Coco with the one health! As we actually find our first ghost type type ty tyrant? I don't know why I was going to call it a tyrant, but just the first ghost type Nexamon that we found in the wild at least is going to be Vodo. Obviously a play on voodoo there. I don't know if I really want to catch it though. I mean, I do want maybe a, a ghost or a psychic type on the team, but I don't know about that one. Gekoko's getting heal even though he's already got the heal. Still don't get why or- Oh my god! Gekoko's gonna be evolving too? I didn't realize it was at level 15. I thought it was at least 16 or 17, but we're gonna get- the Camelivo! Like Chameleon Evolution. Again, not the most inspiring names, I gotta say, but he looks cool. I really like the design. Let me take a look at him again, dude. The Camelivo, look at him! Okay, I really like that actually, but I guess now that he's evolved, we should take off the uh, XP boosting cores and maybe put him on Dinja? I mean, Camelivo's pretty low HP right now anyway, so yeah, we'll definitely switch up those cores and put Odin up first. I don't actually remember how grass types stack up against ghosts, but we'll find out as we're taking on this girl. I'm not afraid. No siree. I'm serious. I'm not afraid of anything. I'll even fight you to prove it. Why do I feel like that was an old meme? Doesn't afraid of anything. That is an old meme. I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it was Master Chief. Master Chief is a cool guy. He... Something and doesn't afraid of anything. It was something like that. I, I don't know. But... Onin, not doing too bad against that first enemy, but we're gonna have Comicide? Oh my god. What a brutal name, man. Or Chromicide. It's like, uh... I don't know what the first word comes from, but obviously the second half is from homicide, which is basically murder. And we also got Cranilo. Yeah, that one's uh, not my favorite design. I mean, it's not a bad design. It just looks kind of ugly, <laughs> which maybe is what they were going for, you know, 
just like with Pokemon, not every creature is supposed to look cute and cuddly. Some of them are supposed to be kind of creepy. As uh, Odin's going to get level 14 and learn the Super Slam. Nice, we can finally get rid of Poison Cloud, or one of them, because we actually had it repeated too. Oh my god, the quadruple evolution! What did I tell you guys? I mean, I kind of set it up so it ended up like this. <laughs> All of our Nexomon were just one level away from evolving. And now we're going to get Peltry. Yeah. Kind of 50-50 on that one. I don't know if I like the evolution or not. But yeah, she says to keep heading east. They say the woods are head are cursed, but they're not really that bad. Speak for yourself, man. I'm shaking right now. There was one more thing that for some reason I just remembered to show off, so it's kind of weird to end off the episode with this, but... In Profile is actually where we can set our follower Nexomon. And I'm pretty sure you can set him up from, yeah, any of the dolls that we found. Which actually, Woozy is one of them. And we just caught a Woozy, so even though it's not in our party, we can actually set up even Nexomon that we haven't seen yet. Like, uh... I forgot what this one's called, but it's the Psychic Starter, or this thing, which I literally have never seen, but you can still set it as your companion, and it'll actually follow behind you, which I find kind of weird. I don't know. I feel like it's cool that you have to find dolls for your companions, but it doesn't really make sense to have an Exomon that we've never seen before following us, in my opinion. Uh, so we're going to set that up as Woozy for now, just because... I mean, it's a little llama or alpaca thing, and look at it, it kind of lags behind too. It looks so derpy, man, with those button eyes. And we're gonna head on to the east! I was about to say in the next episode, but... I guess we'll talk to this girl before we wrap things up. I really don't like this haunted place, but it's true what they say. There's a wealth of rare items hidden in these woods. You wanna trade one with me? Take a look. A fire whistle. You know, I'm still not quite sure what those whistles do. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments, because... I don't think we've ever actually used a whistle. Maybe they just... work? Automatically? Like, is there anywhere we can see the whistles we've gotten? Oh, there we go. With this item, Nexo traps are 3% more likely to capture water-type Nexomons. Oh! Well, I guess that explains what whistles do. So yeah, we definitely want to get as many whistles as we can. Just to make those uh, Nexomon easier to catch. So sure, even though it costs quite a lot of items, we'll, we'll grab that fire whistle. The more the merrier. And with that, we will end off this episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you later. Ooh.